the most interesting part for today's video is we are not only going to discuss in theory what uh, is the internal working of Aralist. We'll also try to explore the source documentation of Aralist. We'll go into the Aralist class. We'll check out its methods. We'll read the Java docs and we'll try to understand how the internal working is happening. When I say interesting part over here, the interesting part is this if condition is is the element data equal equal to default capacity underscore empty element data? Where have we seen this? Where have we seen this? We have seen this when our default constructor was being called. And we know that in case of the first element, Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Code with Ease by Varsha. So we have been doing a playlist on Code Java interview questions. This is the playlist and these are the questions which we have already covered. Apart from that, we are also doing another playlist on threads coding question where we are discussing the concepts of threads and concurrency with the form of a coding question where we are covering the concepts also from scratch and we are discussing a coding question. And today's topic, as we can understand, is about a data structure that we use almost daily an Aralist. There's a related video of Aralist which we have done, the internal working of a copy on write Aralist, which is another data structure, the thread safe implementation. So I would say that people who are trying to understand Aralist for the first time, please watch today's video first, because we are going to cover everything from scratch, anything and everything you need to know about Aralist, we are going to cover first. And as a follow up video, you can watch this internal working of copy on write Aralist also. We will discuss more about the significance of these two in the later part of the video. So stay tuned. The most interesting part for today's video is we are not only going to discuss in theory what uh, is the internal working of Aralist, we'll also try to explore the source documentation of Aralist. We'll go into the Aralist class, we'll check out its methods, we'll read the Java docs and we'll try to understand how the internal working is happening. When I say about internal working, again, what happens when, the, when we add elements to an Aralist? What happens? How does the Aralist grow or shrink in size? All of that we are going to cover today. Okay, so let's begin. So what are we going to have today? So we will talk about the overview. We'll have the hierarchy and the initialization. We'll see the constructor. We'll see the time complexity of the operations, array versus array list, the internal working, and we will wrap up with certain follow-up questions that you might get asked on array list. So overview, why do we need array list? Why are we using array list? That's the first question that comes to our mind. The biggest reason is because it is dynamic in nature. Because it does the dynamic re, re because it does the right dynamic resizing in comparison to a fixed size array where we do new int and then we give the size. We have to give the size. Of course, you can also give a size in case of an array list, but that is not mandatory. And because it is not mandatory, we think it is very adaptable, flexible. It can resize whenever it wants to, and we don't have to pre-initialize it. So that's the biggest reason why we use array list when we do not know when we are uncertain about what the list is going to contain. So that is the biggest reason. Where is it part of? It is declared in the java.util package. We are going to see the hierarchy in the next slide. So dynamic resizing, like I said, it can grow and shrink in size during runtime. And that is the biggest reason why we use ArrayList. What are the other properties? Ordering. ArrayList is being backed by an array. That is why the name comes, ArrayList. It is backed by an array. But in comparison to a fixed size array, it is much more flexible. We do not have to pre-initialize. We do not have to worry how many elements it is going to contain. We can add and remove from the ArrayList as we wish to. But because it is backed by an array, that is why the order is being maintained. So whenever you're talking about ordered versus unordered, like a set is set is unordered, but array list is ordered. It can maintain the insertion order. If you add one, two, three in the list, when you print out, you're going to see the same order. Next, object-based. Remember how we initialize our integer array? We write that new int. I mean, this is how we initialize, right? Int and then our ARR. So int, double, float, all the primitives. When we write our array, the primitives are the ones which we use it. But when we use array list, you cannot use int, float, double. We cannot use primitives. We have to use the wrapper class equivalent. That is in case of int, we are going to use integer. And that is why the signature looks like you use array list and then you write integer or double or float or string. It can only store object types. Synchronization, another property, like we said about the thread safety. Why is this a concern? Thread safety, like I said about that video of copy on write array list, where I've detailed, uh, discussed in detail about why the thread safety is a concern, how is it a concern, everything we have talked about there. So array list, simply just using array list, it is not thre thread safe, which means multiple threads, if they try to manipulate the array list, we can see race conditions that can happen. Now let's talk about the time complexities of all the operations. So when we are doing random access O1, what is random access? You are trying to access an element. Okay. When you are trying to do, you are doing access an element, how we do? Call the list dot get and we pass in our index. When you do this operation, this is taking constant time. 
again why it is backed by an array array is having indexes you know the continuous contiguous memory locations you go to that particular location bring the value out of it so random access gives you constant time complexity insertion if you are doing at the beginning or the end of the array list it is going to give you constant time you have an array this is the fixed size array if you are trying to add something at the beginning or you are trying to add something at the end you already have access to a0 and a1 there is no shifting needed that is why it is constant but if you have to do at certain specific index in the middle of the array if you have to do an insertion you have to shift the elements and make space for the new one and that is why when you are doing insertion at a specific index or in the middle it is taking o of n same goes for deletion if you are doing deletion of a0 or a n minus 1 the last element doesn't make sense i mean doesn't make any difference it's constant but again if you are doing from the middle shifting is needed so deletion will also take a linear time complexity finally traversal of the search if you are trying to search elements you have to go through every location of the memory array one by one traverse through it like we use a for loop and we traverse so that is going to take you linear time complexity from here what do we deduce what do we conclude when should we use an array an array list whenever you can you so whenever you have something which requires you to frequently do random access you can use array list but anywhere you have multiple or frequent insertion deletion happening then array list is not a good choice because of the time complexity because anywhere you go your time complexity the more and more uh, closer it is to the constant time complexity it is better any operation more and more closer to the time complexity like o1 is better like we use hash map and hash set because they give us constant time complexity that is why it is better but in case of array list multiple insertion and multiple deletion not going to give you a good time complexity now moving to the difference between array and array list we have already talked about the dynamic resizing we have already talked about the performance we have already talked about the dynamic resizing so let's see size array is our fixed size this is dynamic resizing we already know data type we have talked about array will only support primitive data types but array list will not we need the objects element access we know that array is going to give you the direct access using the index notation a of 0 in case of uh, array list we used to we need to use this method get method built in methods array will not have any built in methods for manipulating or resizing but when array list we do have methods for we have method to add we have method to remove we have method to manipulate update like set and all we can do so automatic resizing we have already seen in array we cannot but in array list we can so a very basic difference between array and array list from this what do we deduce what do we conclude that where to use array where to use array list see array because of its simplicity because of its fixed size because of its use of simple data structure the performance is always better in case of a array than an array list array list uses objects array list has a memory overhead because it is using objects it is doing the dynamic resizing all of that but array doesn't have so much of overhead so memory and performance wise array is always better so whenever you have to use that constant time complexity in accessing element if that is a constraint of course use an array but of course if you on the other hand you need flexibility you need dynamic resizing when you want to use objects we don't know what is the size going to be beforehand in all of those cases you should be using array list right so this is about when to use which data structure when to use an array where to use a array list now let's talk about the internal working of array list we have seen the default constructor of array list so now we know that underlying data structure is an array what used to happen is before java 8 when we created a new array list when we are doing new array list i'm just writing in short right whenever a default constructor used to be created by default the size of 10 was pre initialized and this is something of a constraint you see i am just initializing an array list array list equal to new array list i do not know if i am going to use it now or later i am initializing it unless i add anything to the array list why should my default size of 10 get created when we are talking of the internal working the very first thing we are starting off is with the constructor what happens when you are using a default constructor we need to understand that so the optimization that has been done is when only after java 8 when you initialize the uh, array list only the default constructor is uh, called and the empty array is created we are going to go to the source code in a while so the optimization that was done is when you add the first element only when you do array list dot add and you add some element then only the array size is expanded to 10 and this is called lazy initialization the earlier what was done is called the eager initialization we don't want that so the optimization which was done is with respect to java 8 changes was this so later on this was the change which came in so now what is happening is whenever you only you are adding an element then only the array the backing array of size 10 is being created now 
how the adding of elements work right so when you are adding the element now you might see the size resizing we are always talking about the dynamic resizing so how does the size get increased to what size does it get increased all of that so let's go to the source code how is it getting increased so one thing is the old array list elements are copied to the new one of course whenever you are doing the dynamic resizing initially you are having a size of 10 and now it has increased to 15 the previous 10 elements you have to always accommodate you have to make space for that you have to copy it and for additional 5 you have created space and you are going to accommodate the new entries into that so how is the capacity of the new array list calculated and that is being done by this formula where we use the right shift operator so if the initial capacity is 10 the new capacity is going to be 15 it's a 50 percent increase so when you are adding an element internally a new array with greater capacity is created with how much capacity it is getting created 50 percent capacity is being increased that because we are using the right shift operator and when we didn't use this formula earlier the size of the array was 1.5x that is 150 percent when the dynamic resizing used to happen. So these are the two major differences which we wanted to bring about that previously it used to be 1.5x now it is just 50 percent increase anything that you need to know about the internal working of array list is only about this so let's go to the source code and explore a bit this is the array list class you have uh, such a big java docs if you get some time i would recommend you to go through it every sizable array implementation of the list interface and all of that this is the array list class here we have certain constants constants and starting with the first constructor c here it is taking the initial capacity what is the backing array this is the object array which is the backing array which is being used here with the initial capacity the new object and the initial capacity is being given like we already have seen now coming to the another constructor where it is taking the collection and it is copying doing a copy of and copying all the elements from the given collection see this line 166 this is the default constructor where it is it is saying that it is initializing your this dot element data element data is the name of the array which is being uh, initialized with a constant whose value is uh, the name of the constant is default capacity empty element el element data the value is nothing it's empty so when your default constructor is called technically only this much is called your object array is being initialized to this shared empty array instance which is used for default size empty instances object this element data is just pointing to an empty array as of now when is it pointing when we are using the default constructor now see the fun now what happens let's say i go to the add method and i add the first element now when i'm using the add method what is happening is if your size is equal to the element data dot length so element data dot length if you do not have anything it's zero right it's zero and your size initially is also zero so it will call the grow method so what is the grow method doing it is again calling another grow method where size plus one zero plus one is one when you see this this is the important stuff now this element data is being pointed to i mean uh, the value for this is coming by doing a copy of copy of the existing data and a new capacity so if you go into this what is what is this new capacity method it returns a capacity at least as like now re read this line it's carefully returns the current capacity increased by 50 percent so old capacity you get from the existing array the new capacity the formula which we were showing is being this where we use the right shift operator to calculate the new capacity what is the interesting part over here the interesting part is this if condition is is the element data equal equal to default capacity underscore empty element data where have we seen this where have we seen this we have seen this when our default constructor was being called and we know that in case of the first element addition this is true because that is what is being pointed to then it does a math dot max of default capacity what is default capacity default capacity is 10 so that is why i said when the first element was being added your size of the backing array has grew or has taken up the default size of 10 only when we add an element so this method is actually being true for any scenario not only for adding the first element this is true whenever that previous condition is true thing is how the capacity increase is happening point number one copies the old elements point number two calculates the new capacity by doing a 50 percent increase these are the two main points which you need to know about how the capacity increase is working how the default constructor is working and this is how what is happening behind the scenes when your add elements is working i mean when you are adding elements what is actually happening this is what you need to know 
So now that we have discussed, so now that we have discussed about the internal working, let's wrap up with the follow-up questions. Is array list and list same? It's not. List is the interface. Array list is the concrete class, which is indirectly implementing the list interface using the abstract list class. But the methods are being used because there is a hierarchy. Is array list a list or is it an array? What is it? Think about it. Okay. Simply it is backed by an array, but it is implementing the list interface. It has the best of both worlds, the fixed size array, and it has the flexibility of a list. When to use array list and linked list? The comparison we have done so far is about array and array list, but linked list we have not compared. But it will come into picture because when we have to decide when to use what. We use linked list when the data insertion removal is happening more frequently. But we have already seen that in case of array list, the insertion and deletion, if you do, very frequently, it is not a good choice because it will give you linear time complexity. In case of linked list, it is constant time. If you know which node you have to reference, like after which node you have to add. So I have all the linked list nodes connected. And if I know that I have to connect after this particular node or after this particular node, then just by changing the pointers, the insertion or the deletion becomes very simple. But if I have to do a traversal, then again, it's the same story. It's so often like we have in case of array list where we have to do the shifting. Here we have to do the shifting in case of linked list when we do insertion deletion in the middle, we have to do the traversal if we don't know where the node is. If we know the node, we can access the node and we can change the uh, reference and we can do the insertion deletion in the middle. Okay, now let's move to the next question. Where would you prefer an array list over an array? We have already discussed it in the differences where you need dynamic resizable data structure, you need array list of course, but when you need fixed size collection, which do not require frequent modification, but at the same time, you need more random access, like random access is crucial for you, use array. Because the complexity in an array is lesser. The memory overhead is lesser. The performance is better in case of an array. Is array list thread safe? Next question. We have already seen it. We have discussed at the very beginning. It is not, which is why a new data structure was being um, uh, discovered, the copy on write array list. What actually happens, we have already talked about it, multiple threads manipulated, causing race condition, concurrent modification exception happen also when we do the traversal, but all of this is being covered in the copy on write array list, so I'm not going to extend this video by talking about that. What are the best practices, next question, for modifying the elements in array list to avoid the concurrent modification exception? So we have a couple of options. So before copy on write array list came in, there were two options, either use the vector class or you use this particular utility method, which is part of the collections class, which is called synchronized list. These two had an obvious, obvious overhead or a limitation that it was performance was taking a hit because it was locking the entire data structure, which we do not want. Copy on write array list doesn't do that, which is why it is a better data structure. But again, each of these have its own use cases, you cannot really impose one over another. But it's always good to know all the available options that we have. So with that, we are wrapping up today's video. Thank you so much for sticking to the end of this. And I'm hoping you guys have got some value out of it. Got a got an understanding of this array list from scratch. Everything we have tried to cover. We have done source code documentation flow as well. And if you now want to read about copy on write array list, I'm going to link it in the related video. Do watch that to gain more in-depth understanding about our list and the other available implementations. Again, thank you so much for watching this video. Do follow my channel, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and like and share the content. If you have got value out of it, share it with your peers, friends, colleagues, and this gives us a boost of motivation for the work that we are doing. Uh, thank you so much.